hope everybody's doing really well out there. I'm going to share in this video a story, uh, a true life story that happened with me back in 88 when I worked at a head shop called Pipe Dreams. I only worked there for about a month before I quit, um, but this is the craziest thing that happened when I was working there. So almost 30 years ago, it was spring when I worked there, I think it was uh, April or May when I worked there, I would open up the shop every morning and one of the things I would do in the morning is um, there were these big huge barrels that I would roll out to the front and I'd, one would prop a door open and so I was doing that and um, it was morning time so the the way the doors opened, you would be facing the east and seeing the sunrise. And I was out there putting out the barrels and I looked up and I saw these two huge men. Two huge men and one was older than the other. They looked the age difference of like father, son, but they were big grown men. And they had on suits with ties and their hair slicked back and uh, shades on their eyes, right? So uh, this, this was highly unusual. This did not feel right or look right. I was very um, concerned the moment I saw them. They were, when I noticed them, they were out of their car and approaching Pipe Dreams, approaching the head shop. And we were just opening and nobody, I mean, nobody got there when we were first opening much less two men in suits with dark sunglasses on looking like the feds. I mean, the first thing that went through my mind was, uh, are these the feds? Are we getting busted? What is going on? And you know, when something crazy happens and you're just processing so many thoughts within a matter of milliseconds, you're just processing all the options of what could be going on in your mind, that they just straight up looked like they had to be the feds. Nobody ever came to Pipe Dreams wearing a suit, much less two men looking like this, looking very serious, first thing in the morning. And um, in my mind, I was thinking, I remember thinking, like, should I take off? Should I run? But then I thought, well, that looks incredibly guilty, and I hadn't done anything wrong, so there would be no reason for me to run off. But I guess I just thought, well, you know, working at a head shop, when you work at a... I don't know about now, but when you work at a head shop back then, they had signs all over this head shop um, that said, you know, these are water pipes meant for use with tobacco only. So if somebody came in, say, and asked for a bong, we couldn't even acknowledge that. We would have to say, oh, do you mean a water pipe? We couldn't say bong. We couldn't say roach clip. Like, there were just certain little technicalities for the shop being able to be open, right? So, you know, I'm processing in my head what could possibly be going on. And the two guys that I worked for, they were brothers. And they were from, I don't know, the Middle East somewhere. I don't remember where they're from. Iran or uh, someplace like that. And they owned the shop. And they were never out in the shop. They were always back in the office. So, like, I never really knew what they were doing. So, um, anyway, I was a little freaked out. And in my head, I was thinking of all the different reasons why they could be there. And I thought, well, I haven't broken any laws, so I better just be cool, right? So I'm thinking all this as they're walking up to me. And I'm trying to just keep doing what I'm supposed to be doing, just like normal. And um, they walk straight up to me. And they said, are you Dana? And I, you know, I'm sure my eyes got as huge as saucers. I said, yes. And, um... They said, uh, you need to get out of this lifestyle. And they handed I'm like, and they handed me this business card. And I looked at the card fully thinking they were the feds. But uh, on their card, they were preachers, like traveling preachers. Like traveling, you know, Christians or whatever. And so I was like, oh, okay. And so they came into the shop. They came into the shop and I thought it was a little weird and I'm trying to think how do they know my name and why do they, you know, come up to me and all this and that. And they go in the shop and they're just wandering around the shop 
like they're looking at things and they're saying things but it's so low I can't tell what they're saying but they're just almost like mumbling the whole time they're walking around the shop right and then um, one of the brothers one of the owners comes out and he comes up to me with this sort of you know look on his face like, who are these guys why are they here what do they want I'm like I don't know I don't know and I I didn't tell them they knew my name because that would implicate me and I, I hadn't done anything wrong and so I gave him the Christian business card and he looked at it and he was just like ah you know and he went back to his office and I just kept thinking why are these guys hanging out here what is what is their purpose like what is the point of this and they just kept walking around and around and around and mumbling and mumbling and um, the way this place was set up Pipe Dreams was on one level and it was like a, a bi-level thing where you could go up into this uh, music store that was if on the outside it looked like two separate shops but on the inside you could just walk up these two steps and get up into it was like a record record shop right yeah so they had all these records in there and I was cool with the guys that worked in the record shop were really nice cool dudes and I went up there and talked to them until the guys left and everything but then what was weird was okay so they left and um, they didn't buy anything and they left and then um, after they left every day after that whenever I would walk into that shop in the morning to go to work I would feel nauseous I just I just felt like I couldn't be in there and if I stepped outside like to get some fresh air I felt better and even if I just went up the two steps into the record store I felt better but um, when I went into the actual shop, the Pipe Dreams, the head shop, I just did not feel good. And at about that time, the brothers were kind of like trying to ask me to do stuff, like go out with them after work. And so um, I was like, nah, and I went ahead and quit, right? I think, I don't know, I think something happened. I know my boyfriend at the time went up there, but I don't I mean they didn't think they didn't do anything too much, but they were just like being too pushy. But in any way, I, I in any case I quit. Well, fast forward a few months, like a few months, all this stuff happens to me um, over a few months, and I ended up going at that time when I was working at Pipe Dreams. I had a roommate. And we had an apartment. And then, after a few months, I ended up going home and spending some time at home. And this was at my mother's house. And at this time, and only at this time in my life, she was going through this whole, like, born-again Christian thing. Like, very hardcore with all the televangelists. And it was just a complete flip of the script because we did not grow up that way. I guess just too much time alone with TV and televangelists got to her somehow. Anyway, I got home and um, I hadn't told her anything about Pipe Dreams. And then she took me to this little country house church. And I went with her just to like appease her. And I went into the church and there are those two huge guys. And there are these preachers at this it was a weird church. I don't know how to describe it. But anyway, they saw me there and they focus in on me and they start talking about how they used to be these uh, satanic priests and stuff. And I'm just like, okay, this is like too much. I regret, I regret being here. I regret coming. And, um, just by me agreeing to come with my mother that one time to the church, they did this whole like confessional thing about how they had been satanic priests and then they start thanking God that I came to this church and they start having tears, little literal tears coming down their big man cheeks and I just can't believe it and I just can't wait till it's over and then when it's over, I'm ready to go. But then my mother insists on me talking with these guys. And then I come to find out she had given them my name. 
and sent them to like spook me. And, but what they had done, I asked them, I was like, well, what were y'all doing? I was surprised if you're Christians that you even came into a head shop and what were you doing when you were walking around mumbling and all this and that? And they said they were doing some kind of incantations to make me not want to be there anymore which I did not know, but I did feel so sick to my stomach ever since they were there that I just didn't even want to be there anymore. So it was just one of these really weird experiences. I thought I was being bested by the feds. They weren't the feds at all. They were these Christian dudes who claimed to be ex-satanic priests. It was just a completely weird experience. Anyway, that's the one I'm going to share today. I have more to share that don't fall under the headline of, uh, or the title of, say, paranormal. So I'll just put them under these weird experiences uh, titles. And then if you're interested, I'll share some more. All right, y'all. Um, I hope you're having a good day, a good week. And uh, we're going to be having a full moon within the next 30 hours or so. And I hope everybody's doing great. And I will see you soon. Bye.